Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Elson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from Italy. Pope Francis, on July 7th visit to the southern Italian Adriatic port city of Bari has many purposes. Rome Reports takes a look at a few of them as well as some of the religious leaders participating. On Saturday, July 7th, Pope Francis will travel to Bari in southern Italy. It will be the Holy Father's third visit to the region this year. The city of Bari is especially symbolic because it houses the relics of St. Nicholas, the saint who represents a bridge between East and West, and who is also venerated in Russia. In Bari are the relics of St. Nicholas, so it's a place venerated by all, but especially in the East, as he was an Eastern bishop. The Basilica of St. Nicholas in Bari is an ecumenical center as the Dominicans who manage it see the saint as one for everyone. The church even houses an Orthodox chapel. The Pope wants to pray for the dramatic reality faced by millions of people in the Middle East who have been wounded by wars, fundamentalism, and religious persecution. The Holy Father has called an ecumenical prayer encounter with the region's Christian leaders, whether Catholics or not. Nineteen church leaders or their representatives will attend the encounter, including those from the Orthodox, Assyrian Orthodox, and Lutheran denominations, as well as the Middle East Council of Churches. Notable attendees will be Ecumenical Orthodox Patriarch Bartholomew, Coptic Orthodox Pope Tawadros II of Egypt, and Cardinal Luis Rafael Sacco of Iraq, the Chaldean Catholic Patriarch. There are seven Catholic churches in the Middle East in communion with Rome and 14 Eastern Orthodox churches. 100 years ago, Christians made up 20% of the Middle East population. Today, that number has fallen to 4%. 65% of Christians in the region are Orthodox. The Coptic Orthodox Church is the largest Christian group, mostly concentrated in Egypt. And from one visit to the next, the Vatican has released Pope Francis's schedule for his upcoming four-day visit to the Baltic nations. 25 years after St. John Paul II visited Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, Pope Francis will make the same three-nation visit September 22nd through the 25th, stopping at a number of the same places. The trip will take the Pope to two important Marian shrines, two major ecumenical encounters, and places that commemorate each nation's fight for freedom from oppression. It will be Pope Francis's 24th trip abroad and bring the total number of countries he has visited outside of Italy since his election to 38 nations. More news uh, from the Vatican. Cardinal Zhao Brazdevis, Prefect of the Congregation for Institutes of Consecrated Life and Societies of Apostolic Life, presented a new document at a Vatican press conference that establishes norms and principles for women who, decide, uh, who dedicate their lives as consecrated virgins and their place in the life of the Church. Consecrated by her local bishop, a member of the Order of Virgins makes a promise of perpetual virginity, prayer and service to the church while living independently in society. The publishing of the document, The Image of the Church as Bride, comes two years ahead of the 50th anniversary of the promulgation of the renewed Ritual for the Consecration of Virgins, an ancient rite in the church that fell into disuse in the years before the Second Vatican Council. News from around the world. The World Meeting of Families is taking place next month in Ireland, and many programs and topics are being finalized. Rome Reports takes a look at some of the issues that will be discussed during the meeting, as well as the Pope's presence at the event. The World Meeting of Families in Dublin will begin on August 22nd, though the highlights will be the events with the Pope on August 25th and 26th. For three days, experts from around the world will share good experiences in family life. For example, members of Retrouville will explain their successful marriage reconciliation program. There will be sessions on family finance and how to improve their economic situations or the perspective of a family business. The use of new technologies in the family and how they affect human dignity will also be discussed. Throughout the conference, there will be a special program for children and another for young people, with debates and sessions on their role in the family and society. The Pope will arrive in Dublin on Saturday, August 25th. In the evening, he will participate in a prayer encounter, including testimonies from families. Hundreds of thousands of people are expected to attend. 
Pope Francis will close the World Meeting of Families on Sunday, August 26th with a large mass. And finally in the news, Pope Francis has announced that lay Italian journalist Paolo Ruffini will be the new prefect of the Dicastery for Communication. Ruffini, who headed the Italian Conference of Catholic Bishops TV and Radio Network, will be the first layperson to head such a high-level Vatican dicastery. Ruffini will oversee the Vatican press office and communication outlets, ranging from radio to the Vatican news site. He succeeds Italian Monsignor Dario Vignano, who resigned as prefect in March after a controversy involving the use and photographing of a letter from retired Pope Benedict XVI. Pope Francis created the Secretariat for Communication in 2015 to streamline and coordinate the Vatican's many news and communications outlets and make them more effective. And the Vatican has since changed its name to Dicastery for Communication. Well, that's all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.